I'll say Ravelry and Insta, and then we go right into Foes. I'm for Pacey and Insta. Why? <laughs> you don't? Is that not what people say? People say that on tech. Some people say it. Dion says it. Insta. Well then. <laughs> My indication is older people say that. <laughs> I'm just kidding, I'm just kidding. Love you. Kisses. Mwah. Whatever. <gasps> your lips look really nice. You're only saying that because you're no, probably you're, old. No, because <laughs> you're pouting. Because you're pouting, so your lips look like really good. Okay. All right, ready? Yep. Hey, guys. Welcome back to the Sleep Here and Chickadee YouTube channel. I'm Brooke. I'm Kimberly. And it is episode 14, and it is June 6th, and we are coming to you from Virginia in the United States. This is a crafty podcast, primarily knitting, a little bit of crochet, but we celebrate all the crafts, and a lot of times we do a lot of crafts, but you're going to hear a lot of knitting on here. And Brooke doesn't usually craft, she definitely doesn't knit, so you'll be hearing a lot from me. Um, she's mainly here for comedic entertainment and to hold things up for us and show things off, but she does have some craftiness today, which I'm so excited about. And we would just like to say welcome for everyone who's coming on into our channel. Um, new viewers, thank you for coming to check us out. Um, let us know who you heard us from. If you heard us from somebody, down mm -hmm. in the comments below. We would love to check them out. And if you're just coming back, I mean, you know, welcome back. I mean, yeah. Come Thanks. on in. Come on in. You know us already. Yeah, We're already just, friends. You, you already know how we go <laughs> along with our um, schedule with how we run this show. If you want to be friends um, on social, go ahead and check us out on Instagram at Sweet Pea and Chickadee. And I'm also on Ravelry at K Armini, just my first initial last name. Everything that we talk about in this podcast will be linked down below. So go ahead and check everything out. We also have an email address in case I speed talk, which happens quite frequently. Or if I forget to link something or if you have a question, you can go ahead and always comment below. I love interacting with you guys. I learned so many new things. I feel like we're already friends with a lot <laughs> of you. Um, and if it, you don't want to comment, just go ahead and send us an email. And now, foes. Oh wait, I thought we'd do whips first. No, foes. Oh. So Brooke, do you want to do, you want to do your foe first? Okay. So, so exciting. Brooke. I have some okay. foes. Brooke has some foes. So for you, for those of you who oh. don't know foes. Should we, po should we pause? Brooke is my 15 year old daughter. She just finished her freshman year of high school, all virtual. Next year she's going right back into it. So exciting. She, her and her brother actually get hurt their second and final COVID vaccine. Well, until Friday, yeah. Friday. So that's exciting. So I'll feel a lot better with them going back to school in the fall and it's going to be great. But she's only 15. So she may look older, but she's only 15. So now Brooke, tell us about your foes. All right. So for those of you who don't know what foes are, foes are finished objects. Um, but I do have some foes and you might have saw them when I was, you know, using my hands because that's how I talk. <laughs> But I've been starting to make these cute little rings that I just make, you know, when I'm, cause it's summer, so I base, uh, um, I I'm tall, so I have bigger fingers than other people, and mm. I can never find rings like just at the store how other people can get them. Mm. You have to like order them on Amazon or something like that. Get the size, you know, mm. like so I made my own and show them up, show your hands, show all your ones. Look at all those ones she's made, you guys. And did you just like? Just, did you see it on YouTube or did you just like... I just did it. You just did it? Yeah, I had the bees and stuff and I was like, you know what? I have nothing to do. Because Brooke wants to be a crafter. She wants all these crafting kits. Like, especially when she was younger. She wants to do all the things, but she usually gets too frustrated. I'm impatient. I and want it... I need it to be perfect and I need it to be done as soon as possible. And she doesn't want to take the time to learn how to do it. She just wants to automatically know how by, like, after a few minutes. I'm a perfectionist when it comes to stuff <laughs> it like that. It doesn't work that way to crafters. All right, Mom, what are your foes? All right, I only have one foe. <clears throat> oh. One foe, and it, it are my May DVD socks, my May Desert Vista Dye Works socks. I love this colorway. Brooke, um, do you want to show the colorway? I forgot to tell me what. This is what Brooke is. So this colorway is the Here Comes the Zombride. It's by Desert Vista Dye Works. I love this is my new favorite normally the neon bright colored ones are my favorites of hers but like this one's just so pretty Brooke can you show the stripes up close so there's this one's like a lighter pinky stripe this one's more of a lavender stripe I love how it looks it's just they're just so pretty and, and mom what hmm. heel did you do oh. I'll say it <laughs> <laughs> Brooke's a learning you guys. I know the heels and I know what <laughs> she's doing it okay so the heel that we have right here is an afterthought heel and you can tell by the bullseye that we have going on over here that's right 
I generally always do an if, afterthought. If I'm not going to add in an accent color, like for heels, toes, and cuffs, or just heels even, usually I just do heels, I always do. If it's self-striping, I will do the afterthought because I love this bullseye look. I just love it. Um, I do a rounded wedge toe, just a two by two rib. I can't see it. I do have 64 stitches for mine, and I just did, I think, like 60 rounds, just a regular leg. Now, I do this because I knit along with Desert Vista Dye Works. She has a like yearly knit along for socks that you have to complete a pair of socks each month, and you knit, and you have to do it in her color, her colorways, her yarn. She mainly does self striping. She's very famous for that, but she also has other colors as well. Um, when you knit along all throughout the year, every month you like accrue percents off, like discounts for her yarn, and then you earn like full skeins of yarn. I think after six months you get a full skein, I'm pretty sure, and at the end of the year you get a specialty colorway that she dyes only for the people who completed a full year. You can join any time throughout the year, you just won't, just depends on how what you're going to accrue when you join or whatever. But I love it. So I normally knit a lot of shorty socks, but yeah, there's like height requirements for the leg and stuff like that. So I'm just using this as an opportunity to get more long socks in my mm -hmm. wardrobe. I like longer socks for boots or for like work. Um, back in the day when I used to go in for work, I'm sure I'll start going in for work eventually. So I'll have a whole bunch of socks ready to go. But I love this colorway. It's so subtle and just pretty. And I don't 100% match mine at all. Look, Brooke, so you can see how it's like a little off. It doesn't bother me. But you can definitely do that. Um, the only thing I do match up are the heat, like when I start the afterthought heel, I will cut and like move up the stripe if I, if it needs to kind of match. I don't know. I don't know why that matters to me, <laughs> but it does. But anyways, so this is my only faux and yay socks. <laughs> and also if you hear bells in the background, those are our cats as always. I'm if you're new and don't know that. <laughs> those are the cats. All right, guys. And now we are moving on to whips <laughs> and whips are works in progress yay so my first one is my muscle burr hat now this muscle burr hat number what brooke three three and i totally expected to be finished with this i showed this in the last podcast totally thought i'd be done with it but i really just haven't been i was knitting it a lot when brooke was at the cross so i would knit during her lacrosse games and stuff like that but she's done for the year and I've just been working on a ton of other things. So I'm just like, oh my gosh, my muscle bar hat still isn't done. It's getting kind of sad. So it should be done by the next podcast. We'll see. But look, Brooke, oh my gosh, isn't that so pretty? Show it up. This yarn is Knitted Wit, and the hat is the Muscle Burra hat by Isolde de Teague. And then who made you stitch markers? They have oh, there. these are whiskers and stitches, both of them. So the moon and the chicken. Oh my goodness. Love them. So that is where I was at the last um, podcast episode. Really haven't gone that much. And honestly, it's only that far because like yesterday I was like, oh my gosh, I haven't worked on this for the podcast. Mm -hmm. And so when we were out, my husband was out barbecuing dinner. I was like, I need to work on this outside. Um, so this is the Yarn is Knitted Wit. Brooke, do you want to show it up? It's a lazuli bunting and it's the sport. And then flip it around so you can see because I don't know if I'm pronouncing that correctly. All right, and then what, what's in that? What's the yarn made of? Um, 100% superwash merino. So this is sport. I normally, for those of you who knit the Muscle Burra hat, I normally use, for fingering, a, a US 2.5. Um, and I love the drape on that. And so I wanted a similar drape with the sport. When I wound it up, I realized it's, a, it's very plump, and I love it for sport. It almost feels more DK to me, but definitely sport um so I had to end up going up to a size us 5 in order to get the same drape that I had I mean I I, fit, I think I first cast on with like a size 3 thinking it wouldn't be that much different and it it was just it works it's just more dense so if you like the more dense hat then you can definitely do that but I like the more drapiness so I use a us 5 so I am knitting I'm almost done you guys look at this mess almost done I need, because what I do is I knit until, so start from the beginning, you start from here, if you don't know what the muscle bar hat is, you knit a tube, and then you decrease down for another top of the hat. 
What I do is after I do the increases in the beginning, I weigh it so I know how much I need at the end for my decreases. Did I say increases or decreases? After my increases, I don't know how I said, I weigh it. There's cats being loud in the background. Um, and then that way I know when to stop doing my poop and to do my decreases. I need about, I needed, <laughs> sorry for the noise. I needed about, it said four grams, which I found that really low. So I kind of like round up. I'm gonna stop at six grams just in case. Um, I have 50, I just weighed it last night, 15 grams left. I am so close to doing the decreases. decreases and then I'll be done. I'll be done with my hat number three. I love this colorway. I was not sure how it was gonna come out. Brooke picked it out at I did, LYS I Day did, I did. at that our local me. yarn store, Needles in the Haymarket. We love them. They carry a ton of knitted weight. It's so awesome. I thought it was gonna pool mainly. Like the weight was skeined. I thought it was gonna pool more like it shows here. I thought it was gonna be like this. And then it ended up striping. It's so cool. And look at that blue section. I just love it's very beachy, right, Brooke? She picked it out for my hair. I did. Redhead. I, I, <laughs> I put. I grabbed the skein. I just smacked it up on her head. She did. And I was like, "This is a perfect muscle bra." I don't know. I don't think we have that in the vlog. Because if you go check out our vlog from local yarn store day, we went. We took you guys on a little tour of uh, the yarn store and, and saw all of our friends and what they are purchasing and stuff. And some of them I hadn't seen in a year, so it was a really good time. Um, this is all in my Mountain State Stitches bag. Oh my gosh! It's my only bag I have of hers. This is. Her I just like just got it like about a month ago I'm like this isn't gonna be my muscle bra hat bag because <laughs> I fully intend on knitting a ton of them um I just love the mountain scene I think she's West Virginia and we're in Virginia like we're, we're really close. close it's almost like local I love this this is perfect for when I go to the games or go out um it has the cinch um and it's the small version I believe which is perfect for socks or a muscle bra hat or whatever what is next, Brooke? The Felix Cardigan. Oh my savory, goodness. savory, savory knitting. Yes. Wanted to say savoring. Savory. Okay, so remember, well, if you're new, you don't remember, but I always, I have a hard time, like, re-mentioning things in the next podcast. I'm like, I've already said it, but, I mean, you could be new. I, should, mm -hmm. I need to repeat myself. And I don't mind when other people repeat themselves on podcasts, obviously, because, like, I forget or I'm not listening or I don't care. So I need to keep doing that. So I'm knitting along in the Happy Knits, it's Happy Knits Cardi Mal, because you can knit or crochet. Um, go check her out, her podcast with her and her son Jordan. He's 16 and he doesn't knit. Oh my gosh, they're hilarious and so cute and so, oh my gosh, just go check them out anyways. But Yolanda, she's the knitter crocheter and she even sews and does a ton of other things other stuff but she's having a knit along or a make along for cardigans and so I'm like I want to make a cardigan I have a lot of fingering weight yarn for cardigans I'm like I'm still working on my sunset highway from like a year I'm not doing anything fingering right now I just need to get stuff done I feel like things have been languishing for too long except for socks and hats and stuff and I just need to I'm like you know what I've never knit with bulky or Aaron or worsted sweaters I've never knit them I'm only knit fingering weight and I just take a long time, which is fine for me, cause it's because I knit a whole bunch of projects at once. I am not a single project person. I knit tons of things, so it just takes me longer. Um, so I decided to make the Felix Cardigan by Savory Knitting, and I love it. So I'm done with sleeves. I'm not all the way done yet, obviously. I still have the button band. And the neck band, right? And the neck band. So the next, the next thing you do is the button band on both sides, and then I do the neck band last. But look. I don't, you can't even really see it, Brooke. You want to hold like one side, and then I hold like this side. Maybe does that work? Yeah, right there. Oh my gosh, you guys, look, look at that. I love this. It's like a pretty lavender tweed, and it's so cozy. So per at first, I thought I was worried because I was trying it on, and I know if you don't have the button band and neck band on, it fits a little like looser. When I put the first sleeve on, I was like, uh-oh, this is gonna be huge. Because I, I made the larger size, I made the extra large. I could have made the large, but I don't think, it didn't have the recommended positive ease. And I wanted to, and I didn't want it to be snug. I want it to be more of like a, you know, comfy cardigan. So I made the extra large and I thought it was gonna be humongous. I'm like, well, it'll just be like my house cardigan and then I'll mm -hmm. make another one. But actually, once I put the second sleeve on, I think it's it's fitting perfectly, exactly how I wanted it. So I'm so excited about it. 
the yarn right here, but if you want to hold up the yarn and then I'll get the little ball bands out for you. It is Plymouth Yarn Company Homestead Tweed. And that is 90% wool, 10%, you know, Donegal, the little tweedy bits. You want to show the little. I love this yarn. I am not a scratchy yarn person. So it was very important to me to make sure it was not scratchy, that I could just wear it. The thing is, I could have gotten really soft yarn and it would have just, but the really soft yarn, as you know, drapes more. So I wanted it to be, still have the sturdy yarn texture where it's generally scratchier, but it has that yarn shape. It holds the shape of the garment different because it's like sturdier. Um, but it can't be too scratchy, that's the thing. And I have been getting better about handling more scratchy yarn from my tape, from my level, which is like not very much at all. But um, a friend of mine, Lorelai from Knit Night, she suggested Plymouth Yarn Company, the homestead. So I went to my local yarn store where she had a ton of options. And I'm like, oh, it is not too bad. It's got a little bit of a scratch, like when you feel it, but you put it on, it's not bad at all. Like if I can handle it, I feel like, cause I can't even wear lace. I can't wear anything scratchy. I just get red and blotchy and it's just not good. So this is not bad at all. Now I wouldn't like, you're gonna be wearing, it's a cardigan, so I'm wearing a shirt underneath it obviously, but I didn't want to have to wear a long sleeve yeah, shirt. Yeah, yeah. and it, it totally is not too scratchy. So I'm so excited. I've even ordered the buttons. <laughs> um, and so that's exciting. I just ordered the buttons, they're coming. I got like a dark mahogany, no, olive. I think it's olive color. What, what color is it? Olive wood, it's like a dark grayish brown. Olive looks green. It's almost like, I know, but it's olive wood. So I'm assuming that's... I'm pretty sure that's still... I, I don't know. Was, I thought it, that was green wood, because there is a green wood. But it's brown. I saw the picture. Oh. It's like a mahogany. I wanted the mahogany one, but they didn't have any in the size I wanted that I could find. So I just grabbed this other one that was really cute. Anyways, it doesn't matter. It'll still look great. Um, and I'm really excited about that. So I just need to work on that. But I haven't finished. I haven't put the button band on, because I kind of need to pay attention, because I have to pick up all mm -hmm. the stitches. Um, and I started a test knit. So it's really, I kind of put this down. I finished both sleeves and kind of put it aside for now. I'm, I'm going to have to wait for the buttons anyways. Because I can do the first button band without buttons, but then I need the second band. Yeah. Button. So this is in my, well, it's in my Scrappy Angel bag. It's her large retreat bag with the wire frame. All smushy. Stands up by itself, but it's got the wire frame. And you can just leave, I love it because I can leave it open, which I have been doing lately because my sweater is now so big that I just kind of put it on top and I grab and carry it like this. I can probably even show you probably. Like I really, sometimes I really stuff it in there because I don't want it to like, you don't want the cats to get into it? The cats or, you know, whatever. But I like have it like hanging out because it won't fit because, you know, I'm making the extra large of like air and weight yarn. So like this and I'll just carry it like this. Perfect. I love it. Okay, so my test knit now. Mm -hmm. The reason why I haven't been uh, working on that as much, well, I haven't done the button bands yet. I'm almost done. And I believe that that goes through July, that knit along mm -hmm. for the cardigan, so I got plenty of time, is because I'm doing an exciting new test knit. It's so fun. It's by Lanre of Lanitz Apparel. I'm gonna put it right down below. Um, it is her new um, Alori, I think it's how you say it, Alori, uh, sweater tee. Look, oh my gosh, you guys can hold it, see how soft it is? <gasps> oh my gosh. So, you guys, so easy. If you have never knit a sweater before, I mean, it's not out yet, but if you are a first time sweater knitter and you wanna make something, this is like the perfect sweater. Lon this is one race like she makes hats and I believe other things but she, this is her first garment she's made and the design is insanely awesome it's so easy it's so simple to read the pattern mm -hmm. and these sleeves were made without picking up a single stitch you literally bind this off and then I mean look at that under like there's no because when I do like sleeves and pick up stitches there's always like a gap and you have to seam it close I haven't done anything. Look how pretty that is. It is so pretty. I just, and it's like a, it's like a boat neck kind of squared off. Oh my gosh, you guys. And guess what yarn I'm using? So I'm using 
this um, loops and threads yarn, we get, I think I have it, yes. I got on like a Michael score. It's the Loops and Threads Echo Brights. It's 100% recycled plastic. It says plastic, but it, you know, it says. Um, Is it upside down? No. Okay. I'll say, all right. It's not recycled <laughs> plastic, but it says um, recycled polyester. I mean, I know it's plastic, but I, it's not like recycled plastic bottles or anything. <laughs> it's recycled polyester. It's just polyester, but we like it better. Which I work on it better. No. <laughs> Okay, so anyways, I got this on sale at Michael's a while, not even that long ago, like a month ago. Yeah, it was about a month ago. I think it's like normally $8. I got it, it was like $4.99, and so I grabbed a whole bunch of the gray, because I'm like, oh, you know, I never need gray. It's so soft. It is super soft. Now, it did take me a minute to gauge, so if you're going to do this, go check out my show notes, my show notes, my Ravelry notes on this, because I definitely had to... I had a gauge swatch like four times. I was so frustrated. I almost didn't use this yarn because I'm like, it's not working. I can't get it. And then I finally like just got it with like an extremely lower needle basically. But, oh my gosh, it's so soft. It's holding structure. This yarn is working out so great for this. And if I, if I use, I use the four balls for five bucks, this will have cost me 20 bucks, you guys. It's like so cheap. <laughs> I'm so excited. So inexpensive. And I look at these. Oh, they're just so pretty and perfect. I just love this. Now she used hers was like the Lion Brand Chainette yarn, which looks amazing too. They have this olive color that I really want to try. But this is so easy. I literally cast this on last weekend. Yeah. But then you started freaking out because of the needles. No, I swatched, that was, that was before. So I had started swatching the week before, like the Monday before that when we got the pattern. But then I was working, so I was like swatching a new one each day, which if you guys know, or if you guys hate swatching, I hate, I loathe swatching. I do it yeah. for garments, especially for test fits, of course. Um, but I always do it, but like, I love it. I don't like doing more than a couple swatches. I literally did four. She, I would come <laughs> And they were in the round. I was like, oh my gosh. I would come into her room and she would be like, <laughs> And she and she's like, Brooke. And I'll be like, what? And then she's like, my swatching. I hate swatching. I it's hate swatching. The, the, the needles. And I have to get a smaller needle now. And I don't think it's going to work. Seriously, I'm like, and I really wanted to use stash yarn. Like, I didn't have a problem. So I fully expected it. I was like, I'm going to have to just buy some new yarn. Oh, shit. I'm like, it's a shame. But I'm like, I was fully want. I love using, right now I have so much yarn that I'm like, I really want to use stash. And it makes me feel, so this yeah, is totally it, stash. And it's working. I am proud of you. I am very proud of it. And you. it's so wonderful. I totally am going to make more of these. Like, mm -hmm. you should make it's more. so quick. Like, look, this is all in a week. And it's not the only thing I've been working on. And I work, and I really didn't um, knit no. a lot this week because I was, work was really crazy. I would be down for this. And I know this is part of acquisitions, but you guys will see this in a second. But it's kind of like the same thing as this, but then with gray. Mm -hmm. That's yeah. cotton. Yeah. But yes. Yeah. But you'll show that during acquisitions. I know. That's a pretty color, huh? Yeah. Oh, you want it? Mm -hmm. <laughs> okay. But, so, I'm going to make more of these, obviously, but i got to finish this first one for the first test knit. But it's so fast. Somebody already finished one in the first week. I mean, she's obviously making a smaller size, but mm -hmm. still, so fast, you guys. I'm making the extra large size, and it's very size inclusive. I don't know what size it goes up to, but um, definitely at least 3X. It might even go up to 5. I'm not quite sure, so don't quote me on that one. But look out for this when it comes out. I'll, you'll see my progress next week on it. Hopefully, or next episode, hopefully, I will be finished by then. It'll be two weeks. I should be finished. Or at least Because literally, finished. you knit down, and then you knit the hem, and then you're done. So easy. It's so simple and so straightforward. I just, I love the simplicity, and I just love the basic and all the details. It's so pretty, you guys. And this yarn is great. Like, it's so soft, and, you know, it's recycled. That's nice. Makes me feel a little good about it. And it was very affordable. All right, guys, so we're going to be doing, we're going to be discussing, well, we, my mom will be discussing <laughs> the Autumn Reek Pullover and the Two of Wands. It's by Two of Wands, the Autumn Reek Pullover. So I know I mentioned last time, for those of you that watched last episode, or probably even a couple episodes, um, that I'm also doing a knit along that just started on June 1st with Strings Attached Podcast. They're all doing the Autumn Reek Pullover, and they got the yarn that was, um, the Lion Brand yarn that was written with the pattern. Um, 
I have not started mine yet. I still have it right here. It's in the, <laughs> what, what is the yarn book that we're going to be making out of? Cotton jeans. It's Lion Brand or LB Collection cotton jeans. And then what color is that book? Cotton jeans. That's, that's just the type of, what color? I think it's like deep indigo or Yeah, something. it's deep indigo. Deep indigo is the one I chose. You can show up close. If we're going to be specific, it's color 110. Oh. <laughs> but yeah, so it is a nice dark denim blue, basically. And yeah, it feels like a worn denim, too. Yeah. The cotton. So I'm really excited to start that. I haven't yet. I was going to even, like, I almost just cast it on just to cast it on. But I knew I wouldn't be knitting it because I want to finish. I have to finish my test knit, which should be done, honestly, in, like, the next week. Um, and then also, I kind of want to get my button bands on my neck band on my Felix. But I don't mind doing that at the same time as this. Um, but I need to, and this is running until, like, like August or something. So I've got plenty of time for that, too. So I have not forgotten about it. I have not cast it on. I have everything ready to go. I even got all the needles and everything for it. I just need to um, cast it on. But I'm being responsible and trying to focus. <laughs> getting my, because test knitting is very important. So I want to make sure that's done. And we got plenty of time for that. She was great with test knitters and giving us plenty of time. Um, and I expect to finish that in the next week or two. It's gonna, it's pretty, it's just knitting. And it's so nice. I don't, it's awesome. Do you guys, do you guys want to know what didn't? make it onto our whip section do you guys want to know yeah you do want to know um my tank top the tank top did not make it i just realized it it's not Only even on our whips be okay because we haven't worked on it but i know what i'm gonna do now remember we just figured it out okay so as you guys know from last episode i had a i had a dilemma um i was trying to basically if you go back and watch it, it looks like i was being really lazy which i was i was being really lazy <laughs> And it was only because you well, guys I also, know I also wouldn't let you measure me. I like never came in like so she couldn't measure me at yeah. any point. So I had two. So my Sunset Highway had an issue, and then right after that, the tank top had an issue. There was like too many big issues with these two large projects I was doing. Like came up like that I had messed up, and work was crazy and stressful. And I was just like, like you know when you just too many things are wrong. You're like just want to give up. Be like I don't even want to. Do I even care that much about it? Should I just move on? And I'm like, of course I care about it. I'm going to go back and fix Mom, them all. you're making me sound bad. What? You're making me sound bad. Why? It's because you're like, it was constantly stressed out. It makes you feel like I'm a bad daughter. What? No. <laughs> you didn't do it. I did it wrong. Okay. So what happened is when I took it off the needles, because my first thought was, um, it's the Summer Court Tank by Dragon Horde Designs. Yeah, Dragon Horde Designs. Brooke picked out the yarn. We are making this little cam a camisole tank top for her. She's very excited about it. It's a very good pattern. Um, there was an issue with pooling when I entered the second skein because I was not alternating skeins. Mistake number one on my end. But the first, because the first yarn didn't pool, but the second yarn did. So that's that's really what happened. Um, and then I was like, do I start decreasing? Cause I'll just start the pooling because it was a little loose on her, anyways. Anyways, what I was gonna do is I was gonna pull back to the lay section because there's a bottom lay section panel and the rest is stuck in it. So I took it off the needles to pull back to lace and then I was gonna start alternating skeins. But when I took off the needles, it looked really large. Like we knew it was large and loose, but it looked really big. So I made Brooke come in, I'm like, Brooke, let's just put this around you. I'm like, it looks really big. Let's, I know the design says six to seven inches of positive ease, but like, I don't think Brooke needs that. Like we're, she's already tall. I remeasured her and I remeasured what the next size down was. Like I basically took that measuring tape for the next size and like I put it around I'm like actually I think this is fine loose enough because it won't be tight it'll still be a little loose it won't be as loose as the six seven inches but like I think this will actually be better and it won't hang and I might not even have to decrease at all because you're not to, you don't decrease in the pattern it's like a straight up and down so and but we don't want it to be like saggy right here in these yeah. arms so I am actually ripping the whole thing out which I oh yeah I didn't know that yeah part. I had to change sizes so I have to take the whole thing out and start over which is why it's not here I haven't done that yet. Okay, well, you're excused. <laughs> so I am going to take the whole thing out, which I wasn't that far. I was past yeah. the lace section, which was like this much, and like an inch into socking it. So I'll take the whole thing out, restart it. I'm gonna alternate skeins, like the person you're supposed, like what you're supposed to do, and I'm going to. Um, and I'll be right next to her the whole way, being like, "Woo, come on, woo!" Doing the smaller size, though. That's that's a that's a story <laughs> on that, Brooke. Was it on my list for a reason? I was going to talk okay. about it. All right. So we're, we're going to move on to cross-stitch. Yes. Because cross -stitch. I have some more sock camp stuff to talk about. 
So that's kind of like, I'll do that at the end. So we're talking about stuff. So that's my hot mess cross stitch. So you guys, if you haven't seen this in a while, this is my hot mess. Okay, look, I finished it. Brooke, you want to show? I finished the, well, I finished the words. Hot mess. Yay. And as you guys know, last time I had a problem, which is why I hadn't finished it because I was trying to figure out what I was going to do. I messed up the H. So as you can see, Brooke, you want to hold it up? The H is supposed to match up with the T and mine does not. Mine's like taller yeah it's a little taller yeah I don't know how I did that I just whatever so then I had to like just I'm like I am not taking it out I'm just gonna make the bottoms longer and it worked mm -hmm. so now the bottom now I get to do all the fun colorful flowers so excited so that's gonna be and then we're gonna hang that probably like right here oh right like here or something mm -hmm. <laughs> that's gonna be in the background so I'm excited about that this was all in a kit by spot colors you want to hold that up Brooke just like the top part so you can see what it is I can tell it's really nice. I love the whole kits because I liked I used to cross stitch a lot back in the day before I started knitting. So I like know how to cross stitch. But like I don't wanna I'm not super into it right now to where I, I'm gonna go out and buy all the pieces and put it together to do it. So I love these kits that you can like get. I got these at my local yarn store too, Needles in the Hand Market. They have tons of embroidery and cross stitching stuff. A lot of it. So I got that. And look, I'm almost done. Well, I got the, but the flowers are more fun. Like this is just, you know. When it's colorful, I always yeah. have more fun. It's more fun. So I got that. Now, next up. All right, so we're gonna go into socks now. We're gonna do that yeah. after. No, right now. Okay. Summer okay. Sock Camp 2021. So if you guys know the Crazy Sock Lady, Kay from the Crazy Sock Lady, um, if you don't know her, go check out her podcast because she doesn't just do socks. She's mainly socks. She loves socks. She also does other things too. But she's got great tutorials if you've never knit socks before, if you want to knit socks, if you want to learn a different way to knit socks. Um, she's got all that information in her YouTube channels. Um, but she does, it's her second annual summer sock camp. And it's all based through Ravelry and Instagram. You have like different cabins, like there's a nine inch circular cabin, there's a magic loop cabin, there's all these different things. So you have, I think it goes from June 1st to like, I want to say August something. I don't know. I actually don't even know. But you, however many socks you can get done, you post your photos. There's tons of prizes and giveaways. She's got tons of donated prizes that she's going to be giving away. And you can learn new things. It's a great time to learn a new method for sock knitting. Do your first sock. I mean, she does like lives right now on Instagram, um, like once a week, I think, where she's talking about things and answering questions. It's really, it's just a lot of fun. It's like a good way to like bust out some socks. There's really not a whole lot of rules to what kinds of socks. Like it could be any size socks. It can be shorty socks, long socks, pattern socks, vanilla socks. Like there's really no, it just can't, like no slippers, um, no whips, obviously. It has to be a full set you do starting June 1st yeah. or whatever. So my, I already have socks that I do every month. So that'll be one entry into it knitting along and it's my Desert Vista Dye Works June socks. So it's in my Scrappy Angel peekaboo bag. Well, that's my favorite sock bag. I mean, I even have her other ones and I just, that's my favorite. And I love the other ones too. I'm actually really excited because I'm using, I will show you later, but I have a ton of other socks that are going to be happening. So here is my Desert Vista Dye Works. So she is one of the sponsors. There was like four sponsors, two yarn, two bags for her Summer Sock Camp, um, and Desert Vista Dye Works was one of them. That's good enough for me because I knit her yarn monthly, so I'm actually like double dipping into, I got her colorway, and also I'm doing it for Sock Camp. So Brooke, ooh, I'm just throwing DPNs around. Do you wanna show the yarn? So this is actually, and it came with a mini. Look at that mini, it's like, so this is off of the logo of Summer Sock Camp, and this is like fire, how about that? So here's what I have so far. Brooke, do you want to show this? This is the Summer Sock Camp 2021 colorway with the mini by Desert Vista Dye Works based on the color logos. And this is like the night sky. I love, that's my favorite shirt. Yeah, that's my favorite one. And what heel is that one, Brooke? This is a fish lips kiss heel. That's right. It's my favorite 
heel right now. There's other ones coming out I need to try because I do not have to pick up any stitches. Mm -hmm. <laughs> now I have it memorized, so it's so fast. But there's a couple other new ones out where you don't also pick up stitches that I want to try just because, like, I like how the other ones look. I just, can't, I don't like picking up stitches. And why do things you don't like to do? Knitting should be fun. Yeah. So, since I'm not used to it, there's a corresponding mini, I was like, yes, I can do a fish lips kiss heel. So I already did that. And I actually started it. I cast on with the mini too. I did a cast on row, obviously, and then two more rows. So the fire is going to be the cuff, the heel, and the toe, right? Maybe. Or is it just going to be the cuff and the yeah, heel? Yeah. I don't generally like doing toes because my toes are different than other people's toes. See, I'm just <laughs> so, I'm, I'm that person that kind of like needs the toe there because like, I don't know where I'm going. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, it's okay. <laughs> I know where I'm going. I can go to the end of the sock, I guess. There's only one way to go when you pull on a sock, Brooke. Well. Anyways. <laughs> okay, and then look. Okay, I'm, I got a little camper um, charm. That came in my last month's Row 1 uh, Carnival Club Colors uh, subscription box. So I was like, perfect for camp. Um, so... Uh, the only thing that they're gonna match, I'm not even gonna match the stripes. I'm only matching the heel and then the cast on little top part, and then the rest is just gonna be whatever. I love that. It's so pretty. Like, I feel like I see pictures of this um, colorway, and it doesn't, like, when I got it, I'm knitting it. I know I know everyone's different because it's hand dyed yarn, but like, I feel like this is like, does not look the same as what other people are showing on pictures. I wonder if it's like lighting or, you know, how cameras don't show the same thing. So 64 stitch cast on, two by two rib. Um, I'm marking my leg. I don't need to mark a heel, obviously, because I already did it. But I'm just counting. I put my counting markers every 15 rounds. I think the K, the K, <laughs> K from the Crazy Talk Lady, she does every 10 rounds. You can do whatever you want. I do 15, um, so I just did 60, and then I do my leg, or my foot, and then I mark that in different color. That's just, I don't have to do that as much with this one. It's mainly for like when I'm marking a heel, I do different colors so I know what's going on. But yeah, I just cast this on like on the third. I didn't even do it on the first. I did it on the third, I think. So it's going really fast. I really like this. I really like this colorway. And then what I did is I want to cast on now all the socks. Yeah. For summer sock camp, like all of them. So I actually went through all of my stash last night for socks that I already had. Like I have stuff organized to where I have a lot of fingering yarn, but then I have stuff set aside that I I bought purposely knowing I wanted to make socks out of them like I already knew it so I was going through all of that stuff because I want to use stash and I found a bunch so it was late last night I didn't want to have to go and wind them downstairs and also two of them I'm gonna do magic loop if you guys have seen my magic loop debacle I can do magic loop is it I'm doing it I need to practice because I'm do I'm pulling too tight and making that line down the side and I don't like it. So, practice makes perfect. So mm -hmm. I'm actually gonna do, there's two I'm gonna cast on with Magic Loop. The first time I did it, I did a toe up. I don't like the cast off, or I probably just don't know how to do it. It's too loose or whatever. So I'm actually gonna do cuff down, and I'm going to start them on nine inches and put them on a Magic Loop. Anyways, you guys probably didn't even know that. But this, I'm in a nine inch cabin. So I do nine, nine inch circulars. I love them, they're so fast. And then last night though, I started another sock for Summer Sock Camp, and they're gonna be nine inch circulars. I'm using their scrappy socks. This is in my Matter Root bag. I love this bag, my little, little birdie. And then it's like buckles. I use this a lot for when I'm commuting into the city for work mm -hmm. back in the day. Um, Cause I would have it like when I'm riding on the train, I would like have it out and I'd be knitting. But as soon as I was done, I would, I would snap it on to my backpack actually. Mm. So just hang there like a little pouch, but then I wouldn't have to carry it or anything. Anyways. You're so adorable. <laughs> so, I, and then it just folds down when you want to. I got, I went through all of my row of minis, which are a lot, and I pulled out kind of a color scheme I wanted to, do for, wanted to do for some scrappy socks. And I literally cast this on last night and I'm already doing the heel. They're shorty socks. Mom. They're short when socks. Did, when did this happen? Last night. I love this yarn. Thank you. Well, they're all different yards. I'm gonna, I'm gonna go through I it. I love that. I know. So, here are my scrappy socks. Brooke, do you want to show? I'm, I'm, I just turned the heel for a fish lips kiss heel. It's not called turning a heel, but you know what I'm saying. Well, technically, you are turning. <laughs> so there's my scrappy sock. 
I'm doing 10 rounds, except for the um, cuff, but I'm doing 10 round blocks. The only thing that's gonna be different, I decided is that I'm gonna have the same color cuff on both socks and the same heel. The rest yeah. will be like whatever I grab next. That's awesome. And what I'm actually doing is I'm grabbing two and I'm picking the one that goes next that looks better with it. That's all it is. But the ones I have so far, because I even kept the little, these are all different companies. Well, only, so the red one, Oh, am I holding this? Yep. <laughs> is 29 Bridges in Berry. Shut up, Post Brooke. The red one is 29 Bridges in Berry. The next one is uh, Crab Apple Yarns in Fox Whelp. I like that name. That's a nice. Cool name. The gold one is Birch Dye Works in Golden Goose. I love that gold. And then the heel which I'm still doing, is Bad Sheep Yarns in the Owl colorway. So it's gonna be really, they're just nice and short. Now, they're shorty socks, but they're actually a little longer than I normally do for shorty socks, only because I wanted to keep these 10 row blocks in, that's the only reason why. I did eight rounds of two by two ribbing, and then an extra round of stockinette so that you don't have to, um, I'll try to block me. Oh, <laughs> my bad. Um, it's okay. <laughs> um, so that you don't, you know, I don't know if you guys know that, but I do the an extra round of sock and net so it doesn't, you don't, you don't see the pearls coming down. I don't, I don't know how to say it, but <laughs> what it really is, but it looks cleaner when you do an extra round of sock and net after ripping. Anyway, in the same color before you switch. Um, so I did eight rounds and then plus an extra round, so technically nine, but then I had a cast on row. So essentially 10, oh my gosh, cats are crazy. 10 rounds, 10 rounds, and then I'll do the heel and then I'll do the rest 10 rounds is what I'm gonna do. Um, I typically do 83 rounds for my foot. So what I'll do is I'll do the 10 blocks to 80 and then the rest will just be total. I'll just do it in one color. I haven't decided if I'm gonna do the toes the same color on both socks. I figure I'll just go off of how, if I really like this sock, mm -hmm. <laughs> and if I want to copy it, then I'll copy it, and if not, so I would say these are shorty socks, but they're kind of like midi, midi shorty socks. They're not super short, but they're not long either, but I really like this. So I got, and then the other colors I'm going to add in is this one, Brooke, want, which color is that? This is 29 Bridges, and this is Dream. Give me that color. Then this one? Uh, This one is Buku, Buku, Buku yarns, and then Sheila take a bow. Say it's bow. Sheila take a bow. Sheila take a bow. It's still the same. And then this one. And then this one's also by 21, 29 bridges, and this is called brass tacks. So that's kind of like my scheme. And I just actually went online because I wanted to like, I'm not super good at just like seeing colors and being like, yeah, I want to do that. <laughs> So I went online and kind of like found a color palette that I like and I'm like, cause I had so many minis and I just kind of pull it together and I'm loving it so far. And actually I think this makes it go faster. I mean, they are shorty socks, but it makes it go faster because there's 10 rounds. So you just, you can't wait to get to the next one so you can switch colors. Mm -hmm. It just makes it what you want to keep knitting. Also, I am doing the weave and Steven method because I do not want to have to weave in all those ends. And so far it's great. I'm doing the tip that the crazy sock lady said where you weave in the first one as you go. When you add in the new yarn, I'm weaving in the end from the yarn I just cut as I'm going. And then on my next round, I'm taking in the yarn that I just added in the end from there, but I'm doing it a stitch before the stitch marker. Like I'm pulling it back. So it's closing a gap because the crazy sock lady said there'd be a gap, which I can totally understand how that would happen. And so far it's working great. And I don't see the, like the weave and seed method. I'm, it's not creating any kind of bulge or anything really great I love it it's so fun and I just started that last night I literally have one two three four other bags ready to go I already have the needles in there the bags ready to go with all the socks in there I seem to one of them is already in in a, a gobstopper ball so that'll be fine I can just start that but um I'll put a picture here because you'll see I took a picture last night where I had all the yarn sitting out of all the different ones I'm gonna do I'm so excited I don't plan on really doing any patterns. One of them self striping. <clears throat> I didn't want to have. I didn't want too many self striping, so I do self striping every month mm -hmm. <laughs> with this one. So I want something kind of different. 
Except for this. This is fun. This is scrappy. And I'm using up yeah. some, I'm using up some minis because my thing is overflowing. It is. <laughs> so I need to use up some minis. Um, this is such a great way to do it. I love it. So next episode, you'll see a bunch more socks pass on. Hopefully some stuff off. Like hopefully these will even be done by then. And maybe I'll start some more scrappy socks too. They give me um Harry Potter vibes. That, yeah, they do, don't they? Yeah. They're so pretty. I really like this. So I don't plan on being the same, but if I get to the end of the sock and I really love the way that it came out, I'll probably just repeat it. Yeah. <laughs> so like, but I wasn't like doing that. Like this isn't even the order I when I had them all laid out, it was more into a fade. And this is not how it was. So I just kinda grabbed the next one and then I'm picking like up based off that. I do I like, like it. Um, and yeah, so if you guys want to do uh, Summer Sock Camp 2021, go check out the Crazy Sock Lady. She has all of her details on YouTube and Instagram, and then she'll link you over to Ravelry or just go find her on Ravelry. <coughs> and all of they have like chatter threads and all the rules, and they have like camp counselors, so like the whole bunch of people are in there, like t helping everybody out. It's so it's really, it's really, it's really fun. That's cute. I yeah. Like that. Okay, I think that's it for, whoops, whoops. Now on to, oh my goodness, I'm dropping it. I just found a DPN. Now on to acquisitions. <clears throat> acquisitions. Now, this is my favorite part because I love shopping, obviously. That is true. But Brooke just told me yesterday what that's I her least favorite part of our podcast is the acquisitions. How is that possible? I'm like, you do all the holding up and talking about them. Why do you talk about them? Why, are you so cool? why don't you? Why isn't that your favorite part? Because there's is there, a reason? there is a reason. Uh, because you buy so much stuff, <laughs> and there's so much to go through. Because it's the longest part of our episode. Yes. Not always. Not always, but majority majority of the time. Of the time. <laughs> and honestly, I didn't even have that much to talk about until yesterday because I went shopping. <laughs> it's fun, guys. <laughs> Not with you. I went by myself. I was in the car for one of them. I didn't even buy. I did buy some. Okay. <laughs> So I went to Michael's yesterday um, because I was looking for more Lion Brand stuff and just kind of see what they had on sale because they usually do have really good sales there. And I saw that they had that same um, Loops and Threads Echo Brights on sale. It was on sale last time for $5. This time it was $4. So I'm like, I have to get more because I really liked it. So as I showed last time how I got one of this color, I went ahead and got more and got a sweater's quantity worth because it's so, I love this color. And it is aqua. Loops and thread, Echo Brights, the recycled polyester. Aqua is so pretty. So I got a whole sweaters quantity of that. And then this, I heard from our test knit group that this cream cotton from Loops and Threads is amazing for um, like garments. And it is, what is in there, Brooke? 87% cotton and 13% nylon. And still soft. Like, it's really soft. And this yeah. is the pale orchid colorway, Brooke, you want to show. And that was on sale for $5 a skein, too. So I got a sweater's quantity of that. So it's, it's pretty bit, soft. The, the color's not showing all the way on the camera. Oh, yeah. Oh, uh, it's looking a little blown out here. Pull yeah. it back a little bit. Mm, mm. That's close. It's a little silhouette of my shirt. It's a little, it's a little silhouette of my shirt. Just it's looking a little more pink than it is. Yeah. It's more, it's more orchid. <laughs> like it's like it's called so I got like a whole bunch of stuff there so I got two sweaters quantity and still did not spend very much money so it was very affordable and I love that um and then I got this these two colorways I got Patton's Croy socks I got the which I love for my husband but this color I really liked for me like look at that color yeah and it is what is the colorway? Flax. Interesting. Mm -hmm. And I got two because you know, they're 50 gram balls and they're like a little thicker than normal. So you kind of have to have both for even for shorty socks. And it's 75% wool, 25% nylon. The same, I don't know why I'm, okay. I don't want to move the, but I also got this colorway and I'm pretty sure it was the Drunk Knitter. You guys, okay. I've always watched the Drunk Knitter and I realized I don't ever, like I don't watch her like straight through because she had a lot of quick ones. Like where she does like her Joanna's fine. I really like those ones. She's so funny. You guys go check her podcast out. The Drunk Knitter. She's not like, the name kind of throws you off. She's not like drunk all the time. <laughs> it's just like, 
I mean, she might have some drinks maybe, but like, <laughs> she was pregnant for a while. She had a kid. Like, so obviously she's not drinking during her podcast. The name's just for fun. Yeah. But she's hilarious and I love it. And uh, she shows a lot of great stuff. So I'm pretty sure it was her that said, we need to go get this colorway from Patton's Square Socks. And I, it's the first time I had seen it available it's obviously been out for a while it's blue striped rag patents croy socks and it's this color i love that i figured i'd make um dad your dad yeah. damon uh, my husband some shorty socks i got two he's a size like 15 but actually i realized when i made his last socks he must get his shoes bigger than his feet are like really a lot bigger mm -hmm. i think he's got wider feet and other issues with his feet. He had a, like a lot of surgeries on them. So I think he just likes them bigger because when I did his socks, I didn't have to make a size 15 sock like for shoes. Like it was a lot significantly smaller, I feel like. Yeah. And his feet aren't that big. Remember I was telling him, he's got rather dainty feet <laughs> for such a large foot. It's rather, I mean, they're bigger than mine, but you just expect them to be bigger. I don't know. Based on his shoes. His shoes are huge. <laughs> yeah. But his feet are not that big. Anyways, tangent. So I figured, I'm hoping to, because you know, Patton's Croy is still like $8 a or a 50 gram ball. So not like super inexpensive, but um, so I'm hoping two will work for shorty socks. I'm gonna make those for Damon. I might make those for, I was thinking about Cassie's on last night too for summer sock camp, but I was like, even if they're shorty socks, they're still size mm -hmm. humongous. <laughs> <laughs> so I'm like, hmm. I mean, maybe I will though. Maybe I'll still cast them on because they're shorty socks. They won't take as long. That's true. You've only ever made them long socks, so. I know. This will be a new start. A new star, I like that. All right, and then <laughs> I went to Needles in the Haymarket. Okay, my local yarn store. First of all, I needed some needles. Like, I needed more. I got more needles for summer sock camp because I want to cast on all the socks, and I have, you know, I need, I need all of them. Um, I got more magic loop, and I got more nine inch circulars, and then what? But I had seen that she posted on Instagram that she had gotten hook, line, and tinker. Okay, I've been following hook, line, and tinker, which is an embroidery um, company for on Instagram for like a while. Like I've been, I think they're Canadian company. I want to say, yep, Canada. Um, so I'm like, oh, I really want to order, but you know, it's a she haven't done it yet. And then she posted on Instagram that she's like, oh, look at these new sets. I'm like, you have hook, line, and tinker? <laughs> yes. Because I can just go down there and get them in person. And their whole kit's already, this is the one I picked out. It's not the pretty one. It's the Hogue horse. I think that's how you spell it. How should you pronounce it? Hogue? Hogue. I think it's, but I, it's pronounced not how it's spelled. I'm pretty sure it's Hogue. It's pronounced not how it's spelled. Nice one. I'll put it right here. <laughs> if I'm <laughs> saying it wrong, I already forgot that one. Um, but yeah, and, that, and she got a whole, like a whole line of like this style and she's got like other ones too. And I was like, oh, I really like the bear one because it had a cool like green mountain background or trees, mountain. But I was like, I'm not like a big bear person, <laughs> but I really like horses. And they even had chicken ones. And this is what I got for this one. Made in beautiful Nova Scotia. Oh, but it comes with everything. Like it comes with all the things you need. And I know how to embroider. My grandmother-in-law, my husband's grandmother, taught me how to embroider. And I was doing, but that, I was doing like tea towels. Yeah. I where I would iron transfer the pattern onto it. And then you and take then, the thread and then you, because I, I. We started. I found mine in my closet from like four years ago. Oh, that's nice. Anyways. <laughs> so this is great because it's like a little already ready to go. I, love, I think it's so cute. I love this. So I got one of these as well as all the needles I got. I literally got like five sets of needles, just so you know. And then they had an, another Spot Colors Counted Cross Stitch Kit. This one's a little bit smaller than the one that um, I'm doing right now, but it's perfect because I say this to Brooke all the time. <laughs> Actually, what I tell her, what I say to her all the time, when I saw this, I was like, oh my gosh, I say this to Brooke all the time. I tell her to stop making it weird. But that's my phrase. I'm like, Brooke, stop making it weird. It's because I get awkward. It's like when I'm hanging out with people. She starts making things weird. I make it weird. She makes things weird. I'm like, why are you making this weird? And so I'm like, this is going to be, don't make it weird. Don't make it weird, Brooke. I wonder if I could put Brooke right here. Don't make it weird, Brooke. The flower's there. We can't ruin the flower. <laughs> so I'm really excited about this one. And it's smaller. Maybe that'll be here over Brooke. No, don't thanks. make it weird. Thanks, like a reminder. When you look in the camera, you can mm. like, don't make it weird, Brooke. I love you, Mom. <laughs> So first I gotta finish our hot mess one because that's gonna go right here because I'm the hot mess. 
Oh, you don't need to not make it. You need to not make it weird, and I need to stop being a hot mess. Or I just need to. I just embrace my hot messness. Hot means space mess. It's like yeah, it's total hot mess. Like you're like hot, but then you're also a mess. No, oh, got you. <laughs> but hot mess. So um, I left the yarn store without buying any yarn. I was so proud of myself, but then I went to Michael's and bought a lot of yarn. Okay. And she came pick me up, and she was like, "Look at all the yarn I got." And I was like. Like, but it was, you know, Michael's yarn, so on sale, inexpensive. I can make whole sweaters out of. Mm -hmm. I literally spent. I got two frames and all that yarn for like seventy eight dollars. I mean, honestly, love that. I love my hand dyed. I have so much of it. I need to use that. And you know, I obviously still purchase my hand dyed yarn, but I'm trying to be responsible, more financially responsible. <laughs> okay, mom. <laughs> and I, I want to use stash. And also for like bulkier items, just the inexpensive yarn. Cause, and I, cause you know, when you make something with a beautiful, expensive yarn, you're just like, it's hard to wear it because you don't want to ruin it. You don't want to get it snagged. You don't want it. So it's like you wear it very preciously, but like something with inexpensive yarn, you can like wear all, I feel like you get more wear out of it because you're not as. I'm not like that. If I have something really expensive, I wear that crap until it's not expensive anymore. Yeah. Sure. <laughs> all right. Why you look at me like that? I don't know. Like, so like we're like, we're like what processing. You were <laughs> yeah, processing all the words you were saying. Okay, last up. I actually did not even think I was going to have my clubs, my subscription boxes. Yes. Until Monday. So, I and I actually got them both. So I'm like, oh, perfect for the podcast. So, next podcast, I will, should have less acquisitions, Brooke. If that makes you happy. <laughs> <laughs> so happy. So excited. First up, Brooke likes this one because she gets to show off all the yarns. I get to say the names. I like saying the names. Row one. So, this is my row one Carnival of Club color. It is a mini skein subscription service. Um, you get 10 10 gram minis. By a different dyer every month. By a different indie dyer every month. This is perfect. I just showed you. I'm making a whole scrappy socks out of just my row one yarn minis. Um, you can use them for heels, toes, and cuffs for other things, which I am doing for my other clamp or clamp camp colorways. Um, for summer sock camp, I'm adding in like a bunch of minis for like the heels. Yeah, and this um this uh, subscription is great if you want to try out like um indie dyers that you that you see online. Mm -hmm. So like mom, she's like gotten subscriptions of people that she wanted to try out, but she didn't know if she would like it. And then she found out that she like would like it because you get or you just get like a little sample of it, and then you just get to like you get to have the sample for whenever you need. So you can use it for like accents and stuff. Mm -hmm. I almost forgot because I put this away already because I didn't want my cats getting into it. Um, I got a Happy Mail box. Happy Mail. Happy Mail box <laughs> <laughs> from my friend Amanda. Hi Amanda, thank you. From work, she wanted, needed to get rid of like these stash of yarn that she knew she she loves but she wouldn't be using. Um, and I was like, oh, just do D stash, like how everyone does it on Instagram and sell it. She's like, no, I'll just send it to you. I was like, okay. <laughs> so I got free yarn. Thanks, Amanda. Um, and this kind of goes into row one because this is how I, she loves Pancake and Lulu. Like she gets their advent. Um, and she sent me Pancake and Lulu bulky weight. So I've never even had any kind of Pancake and Lulu before. And this is bulky for a great for hats. Brooke, you want to hold this one up? I got two skeins of that one because this one's already wound. I think it's the Druzy colorway. Do you yeah, want to show them the um, show them the tag? And what's it made out of, Brooke? Hundred percent superwash merino. And then here's another bulky, which I think I already the tag fell off somewhere. But here's another one. I love this blue color. So I love that. And this one's a different one. We'll just show really quick. This is by Space Cadets. And what's the colorway? Oh, that's the colorway. Century Farm. Mm -hmm. Another bulky weight. I love that green. And this one is made of 100% superwash merino. I love this. So think, and she also sent me, the box was bulging. She sent me a ton of um, mohair and other like lace weight yarn. Oh, she even sent me, um, Dragonfly fibers, lace, two giant lace weight skeins. Oh my gosh! Like, I didn't grab. I only grabbed the, the pancake and Lulu mainly because it segues into my row one. So I knew that she loved them. She talks about them, and it's my first time getting it. Literally, the next day I got my row one. Um, it's Carnival pancake. Club. It's pancake, pancake and Lulu. Lulu. I was like, oh my gosh, it's so weird, right? This has been happening a lot. I feel like with row one. 
Like, I get this, the monthly club, and it'll be, have just been something I've been looking at. You literally have that color. That's a different color. Similar. Similar. So this is Pancake and Lulu. Brooke, you want to show it up to the, just to kind of give it a round? We're going to go through all of them, but that's how it comes. And you get a little bag of goodies. These are pre-wound minis, 10, 10 gram minis. And it also has the dyer and the name of the colorway on each little skein. So excuse the crinkling. We're going to dump them out. So I haven't even opened these yet. I was peering through the bag. Okay. All right. All right, Brooke, you want to go through and sh make sure you show them after you say the name. Can we hand them to you? Come on. Come on. Okay. So this one's called Brooke Trout. Mm hmm. I love that. It's very rainbow trouty. It's very Brooke Trout. Mm hmm. This one's called Peony. It's very peony. <laughs> This one's called Boysenberry. It's a little darker in person. Yeah. This one's called Night Lilac. That's pretty. That is pretty. It's a little lighter. This it shows up to be like really dark on camera, but it's lighter. I like this one. This one is Lily of the Valley. So pretty. That blue is just like so blue. That was really pretty. This one is Burnt Rose. I like that name. This one is Green Earth. This one's pretty too. This one is Street Graffiti. I'm literally repeating, just this one is, this one is. <laughs> the name of this one is Apple Lime. The name that was given to this <laughs> is Wave. So that's Pancake and Lulu. It's so crazy how I just got like, and it's a surprise. You never know the diary you're gonna get for that month. And so I was like, oh my gosh, that is so crazy. So I took a picture and sent it to Amanda. I'm like, oh my gosh, Pancake and Lulu. Guess what I just got in row one. And it also comes with goodies and also a piece of paper in here that tells you about the dyer and the names of the colorways. Sorry for the crinkling, more crinkling. Have you looked at me yet? No, I opened, oh. It's a goodie. Brooke, what is it? Oh, I got two of them. There's Zots. Yeah, you, Zots you cherry. No. This is great. Zots are like, when was Zots, guys? Maybe I was, I don't know if I was in like middle school, if it's like a high school thing. I want to say. Are earlier. these like jawbreakers? Aren't they fizzy? Aren't they like, um, I don't remember. I don't remember. I feel like you eat them and then like there's like stuff in the middle and it's kind of like, I don't know. I don't know. <laughs> I already forgot. Oh my gosh. The bike? It's a big old bike. I love this. Okay, Brooke, show that. We always see a stitch marker and a little tree. Check out the dots. Show the other side without the, um, there you go. You can kind of see. It's like a giant bike. That is so cool. And it com usually comes with it. You can do either or. Yeah, that is huge. It's a really big one. I like that one. And it always comes with, it'll like, she prints off what the label looks like for like their yarn. Pancake and Lulu. Um, so Laura's the one that runs Row One Yarn. So is it Pancake and Lulu? Like, is that, are those like her animals names? I don't know. Because Pancake is, I have a friend with a cat named Pancake and Lulu. Maybe. It's like, kind of, Lulu gives me dog names vibes. So it tells you what all the yarn is. 75% Superwash Merino, 25% Nylon. Um, Pancake and Lulu is a one woman indie, da, indie fiber dyeing company headed by Amy, and she's based out of New Jersey. Um, awesome. Tells you how to wash it, if you need to know. And they tell you the names of the yarn mm -hmm. in there. But it's also on the yarn. Yeah, yeah, it's also on the it, label. Because I put it in like a giant, I have a giant glass base where I just like pile all of them in there, so they all get mixed up anyways. So I love how the names are actually on the mini skeins. And I love that. So that was this month's. That was June's Colorway Club or Carnival of Color Club. All right. And then cool. next we have Yarnable. Yarnable. This wasn't supposed to come till tomorrow too. And I got it early. So Brooke did a really good job of guessing the colorway because we, so this is how it looks. Brooke's going to show how it looks when you open it. So this is the yarn and there's goodies. We always do the yarn first because Brooke guesses it. I guess. And then she tells me the name. And here's the bag of goodies. 
And I'm like, name, and then I guess, and then the I'm name so good is on the card, and it was Wildflowers was the name. And Brooke did a really good job of guessing the color. So Brooke, do you want to pull it out and show? <laughs> so pretty. The oh. green and pink are so vibrant. And I love yarn is so soft. Yeah. I like the yellow. Yellow's a good color. Yeah. It's really pretty. And what, what's the base made of, Brooke? Um, let me tell you. Um, oh, okay. It's superwash merino and nylon, and it's fingering weight. And, and it's 85.15. Yeah, I didn't know what that meant, so I just skipped that part. <laughs> I was like, oh. Then I'm putting numbers on here. And it talks about all the goodies you got. So we got the Naked Bee Hand Sanitizer, Orange Blossom Honey. Oh, I bet it's going to smell good. Let me see. No yarn smell either. Oh. It's covered. Oh, you can still kind of smell it. It's good. It's important to have good smelling hand sanitizer. Are you going to tell them the did you know? Yes. Then you got a packet of Sisters Bee's uh, Bee Food Wildflower Seed Packets. And even tells you like how to do it. These are cute. And then I really like these. Um, honeycomb stitch markers. Whole bee theme this month. I like that. Honeycomb stitch markers. I love and I love this perfect size for socks or I love these ones. And they're like, I love this copper colorway. And my next favorite part is the did you know? Because we always I don't know if you guys see this, but when you get your yarn bowl, it's on here a little, did you know? I learn new things every time. Mm. So this month, did you know, no other month in the year begins on the same day of the week as June. I did not know that. I wonder why that is. Isn't that weird? Another fun fact about bees is that if there's a queen bee, if she does not get accepted by the, um, like the group of bees, they kill her. Oh. Jeez. <laughs> <laughs> I, I wouldn't call that a fun fact. I mean, it's, it's a like fact. A traumatizing <laughs> fact. But there's also, you get like a little scratch off or a discount in her shop. So Yarnable is run by Cheryl of Hypnotic Yarns. Yarnable is her monthly subscription, but she also has, um, Hypnotic Yarns is her shop where she dyes other yarn as well. Um, so you get like a little discount. You never know what it is. Scratch off. Brooke's usually job is to scratch that off. And then you have a discount for that month in her shop. Do you ever use it? I have not yet. Well, first of all, She's such a great dyer that her stuff sells really fast. Mm -hmm. And um, so I just hasn't, I just haven't, I'm trying, I'm told, I'm trying to be financially responsible. No, I'm, I'm, just, I'm just saying before you decided to be but financially no. responsible. You didn't I, I have, I have not used it yet. But I have gotten some great discounts too. I just haven't used them yet. And you only use it for the month. So like it only is valid for like this month, for June. I always keep all the yarn. I just put, I stash it away in this. These are great little, little mm -hmm. bags you get to keep. That's it for acquisitions, Brooke. Your least favorite <laughs> thing is All right, and now we are moving oh on my gosh. to podcast because mom doesn't have any dream knitting. I didn't have any dream knitting, and that's not because I don't have dream knitting. It's basically because I'm casting on all the socks. And my upcoming knitting is the Autumn League Pullover after I finish everything else here, finish my test knit, and cast on all the socks is basically what I'm doing. Yes. A ton of socks. Podcast. Podcast though. I have a brand new one. Um, Pretty Twisted Yarns. I think she's like had like four or five. She's uploaded. I can't remember if, if I heard, I think I might have been following her as a yarn. Like I, as a yarn, because she dyes self-striping yarn. I think I was following her before and I then I realized she had a podcast. But she's also premiered on Crazy Sock Lady. She made a specialty colorway for a crazy sock lady. It looks really pretty. I almost, I really want to buy that one. But she really has a new colorway that I'm definitely buying here, like the next week or two. It's right the, after you said you're trying to be financially I responsible. I know, but it's for it's red, white, and no, blue. Yes. It's oh like God, yeah, yeah. Me that. it's yeah, called okay. America. It's red, white, and blue stripey ones. I love all of them, but like that one, I'm that one because I don't have any red, white, and blue patriotic striping yarn. I could probably make my own. I was thinking about it. I, I could literally probably grab minis and make my own, but I don't want to. I want to get the self-striping yarn from her. She's so funny. You guys, check her out. She's in Florida. She's, like, really funny. I think she's been posting hers, like, weekly, her podcast. So I didn't realize she had a podcast, so I watched them, and then I binged them all. There's only, like, four. But she's really funny. Go check her out. She's a great self-striping yarn. I'm totally going to get that America one here, here coming up. So yay for that. 
Um, now let's go into watching, reading, chit chat. Do you, what do you? So I've been you're, reading, you're reading a lot. I've been reading a lot, honestly. So I'll divide them into sections for you guys. Um, so I got two suspenseful thrillers type thing, which I usually don't get, but these <laughs> ones look really good. Um, one is called Good Girl's Guide to Murder, and it's kind of like a mystery where there's a girl is trying to... I didn't know you got these. Where did you get these? Oh, is that the ones from Walmart? Yes. Oh, okay. Oh my god. So these are... You, that's usually my genre, not hers. So Good Girl's Guide to Murder is about this, um, I think she's a senior now, but she is trying to kind of figure out like who framed this guy for killing this girl basically mm. that's, just, that's just a brief thing there's so much more stuff in it <laughs> um and we got another book called the lake which is also a, a, like a mystery thriller um if you've seen i know what you did last summer it's literally mm. that except it's at like this camp like the summer camp they have that's there oh yeah so like they get a note instead of instead of it saying i know what you did last summer it says the lake always knows and i'm like well the lake kind of needs to get out of here so the lake doesn't know anything the lake knows stuff, and I don't know what the girls did. And then, and I, I, I actually started reading the first Shadow and Bone book. Mm. I started reading it last night. It's super good. Um, and then I also got the second book of this one series I'm obsessed with. It's the first book's called Crave. I talked about it like a couple episodes What's ago. What's the series called? Is there like a series name for it? I don't think. I think it's just called the Crave series. Mm. Um, but because it goes Crave, Crush, Court. Cam Camelot or something like that. Mm. So I don't crush and those are all and then crush that's like more of a fantasy type thing. It's like vampires, werewolves, dragons. That was the one where I was like dragons. Yeah, there's dragons. Like, there's one are dragons in there's dragons <laughs> the oh, vampire oh, book. And there's gargoyles. There's a lot going on in that one. There's they're they're just grabbing all the stuff and putting it in one book. Yes. And that's what I've been reading. That's awesome. I'm still reading my book. I already for- I forgot what it's called. The Sanatorium, I think. Yeah, the Sanatorium. By I'll put it below. Um, I basically only read it on the weekends a little bit because I've been doing a lot of knitting. Last week was just... What is new? It was a rough work week last week. Yeah. I love my job. <laughs> it's just very stressful right now. And... But I love the work that I do. What do you guys have to build? But So it's like, like you can't sleep very well because all you're doing is stressing about work. And then after work, you just want to like zone out and like stop thinking about things, but you can't. So I haven't really, so knitting has been my, like, my solace, basically, but even then, I've been working on my test knit, which I love. It's been very, mm-hmm. very nice and therapeutic. But I did read, a, I took, like, a kind of a self-care day last, like, weekend, like, a week ago last weekend. I did, like, like, did my feet, and I haven't yes. cleaned my toes, but, like, okay. I was, that like, was doing, and so I was reading while I was, like, having my feet soaking, and so I was getting, so I haven't really been, but the book is really good. It's almost hooked me then but then I was like doing other things mm-hmm. it's one of those things where I have to keep reading it I don't want to like stop because I've been knitting it's hard to have multiple hobbies I wish I like now you gotta be like me solo hobbies sometimes they're not even considered hobbies they're just things you like <laughs> <laughs> so I really like that book it's a you know scary book obviously that's what I like to read um but we, our last and exciting news is we're having our very first knit along you guys it's actually a sock along Yay! Woo! It's so exciting! Yay. I was so delayed. <laughs> like, you're, you're, you're like, and I was like, oh, we're doing this. Okay. So, it's called the Summer Melt Sock Along, um, and we're doing it in starting July first. It's probably gonna go into August. I'm thinking like middle of August, maybe even the end of August. I haven't mm-hmm. really decided yet. Um, I would love first time sock makers to jump in on this. So, uh, so many great tutorials out there, and I will definitely share more about that later. Um, it's called a sock along because you can knit or crochet. You can do either. I don't, it doesn't matter. There really are no rules on the socks. They have to be socks and there has to be a pair. I mean, that's it. And we're going to have like giveaways involved in it. And what the main rule is that initially we wanted to do like a a Christmas in July kind of thing. But then we thought about the part, the fact that many of you might not celebrate Christmas. Right. Like, yeah, we don't want to exclude. I don't that. want to exclude anybody. I so. want everybody to jump in on this awesomeness. So then I'm like, well, maybe it should be like some kind of a holiday thing, where any kind of winter holiday. And they were like, scratch that. It should just be basically be winter. So it could be 
winter themed socks, holiday socks, whichever holiday, winter holiday you celebrate. But what if you don't celebrate any of the winter holidays? Then do winter, right? Mm-hmm. Winter theme. Like it literally can be anything. It can be the colorway. It can be the pattern itself. It could be anything. Honestly, I'm not checking up on you. You tell me it, it falls into the category. We're not going to be staring at it. We're going to be like, mm. this is that, fun. Gives me, that gives me fall vibes. Yeah. I don't like okay, that. Fair enough. It is like really fun Mm -hmm. so I want it to be super fun and super inclusive and we want everybody to just like join in so because a lot of times what happens is because we were thinking for Christmas right you want to have Christmas socks or holiday winter holiday socks but like you're like oh I'll I'll make those later when it's closer to Christmas and they don't finish them until after Christmas you get into gift knitting season right then you're not making yourself socks until like December then you're like making your own socks but then you don't get to wear them in December because you're making them so Mm -hmm. if we make them in July or whatever, and you'll have them. You see, you see so you'll what have we're at least at? one pair of holiday socks or winter socks to wear in the winter holiday season. I'm so excited! So, thank you to my knitting group, Kate, uh, Raging Pearl, One, Rebecca, Lorelai, I'm Scrappy Holly, Angel. Scrappy Angel. Who else? Who am I missing? Tammy, M- Monique, everybody who's helping me um, go through. We were like brainstorming ideas because I was like, well, we want to do Christmas, but we're like, we don't want to exclude. We want everybody. What can we call it? Like, what what kind of theme could it be? Come kind of winter. So it's awesome. The summer melt sock along is going to be July first, and more to come in the next one. I wanted to tell you early before July because in case you there's other there are places you can get still holiday sock colors if you want to get Christmas, Hanukkah. Um, all the other ones are blanking from my mind. I know, I know that I know them, but I can't think of them. Any winter holiday socks. I'm so sorry. Like, blank. I, like, I, I was going to write them all down, and then I was like, no, I'll remember the names. Sorry. Um, or even New Year's. Like, yeah. co- uh, anything, honestly. So, uh, go ahead and get your yarn ready. Um, it could be as many or just one pair. It doesn't really matter as you want. Um, and we're going to have fun. And it'll you can double dip into the summer sock camp, because Creek Sock Lady is having summer sock camp, so you can input for those prizes as well. So, whatever you're knitting... You want to throw in one of the holiday themes or winter themes in for the sock. It's going to be so much fun. I'm so excited. We've never done a knit along before. So we're just going to have a lot of fun and mm-hmm. want you guys to join us if you want to. Yeah. <laughs> but more to come next podcast, which will be before July. We normally podcast every, every two, two weeks, weeks. Unless something happens. Which happened already twice in the last like couple months. <laughs> we yes. waited three weeks. <laughs> but normally it's every two weeks. So we'll have another at least one more podcast before July 1st. But just in case, like, I know, like, the Homestead House? No. Where's the Homestead House? A homespun house. Oh, my gosh. I'm so sorry, Molly. A homespun house. <laughs> she's in Germany. She's, I just noticed that she, in her sale section, she's got Santa baby yarn. So she's got holiday yarn in there. I know other people have, like, all the other holidays. Or it doesn't have to be, like, late. If it's not even called that, but it's the colors that go with it, maybe you want to grab it. I don't know. That's cool. Yeah. So join us. I'm so excited. So that more to come later, but that's what's coming up. And then we'll get the hashtag figured out. It'll probably just be summer melt sock along. It's probably what the hashtag will yeah. be. Just spell it all out. Don't get too crazy. Um, we were going to like abbreviate it at one point, but then like there's some like social media award <laughs> for the abbreviation. I'm like, mm, nope. I'm <laughs> taking mm-hmm. that off for the hashtag. We'll probably just spell it out. Don't be crazy. Um, but yeah. And that's all I have to say. Brooke, is there anything you wanted to say? Yeah, no, that's it. Go ahead and click, if you liked what you heard, go ahead and click like. Go ahead and subscribe if you want to be alerted to the upcoming um, episodes that we have. Yep. Um, Follow us on Instagram and Ravelry, and um, we'll see you next time. All right, bye. Bye. Mom. Mom. Do you think that in Spain, or like any Spanish-speaking country, right, and you know how the game Uno is there? Do you think when they have Uno, it's called one? So they just yell, one! No, but do you, no, I actually, like, legit, like, do you think that's a thing? Or do they just say Uno? That's kind of lame. Well, they say Uno because it's their, it's their pick. I know, but we don't say Uno. That's why, that's why it's more fun to say it. They have to say Uno. But what if they want to say one? Like, one. I mean. <laughs> and what if they actually says that in the box? Okay, Chandler. I feel like this is like a friend's. I'm gonna think that's a compliment. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs>